He is good. Amen. Amen. He is good. He, he is, is good. good. And we are having fun. We are enjoying it. And, mm -hmm. and it, you know, and I was just sharing with everybody here that it just seems like every, every time we get together, it's getting stronger and stronger and mm -hmm. stronger in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and God has a plan. He has mm -hmm. a plan. Mm -hmm. He has a plan. This is just this is just a, a platform for us to use that plan, uh, mm -hmm. the, a platform for that voice of that plan. Amen. But uh, he has a plan, and, and we are part of that plan. Amen. Amen. And uh, we want to welcome you. We're Ray and Jean Snoke. We are the pastors here of uh, the Rivers Family Church, mm -hmm. and uh, we are a growing body of believers. Yes. We are a growing body yes, of believers. Are. And uh, uh, we are a supernatural church comprised and, and composed of supernatural, supernatural people, people doing supernatural, supernatural things. things. And we you? believe that Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Yes. You know, Terry and I got off on that one yesterday in our coffee. Okay. Um, you know, we, we believe wholeheartedly, you know, one of our favorite ministers. That's how he opens mm -hmm. and closes his, his sessions mm -hmm. at, at every, you know, and it's like, okay. Really, Lord, you want me to start doing that too? You know, but then all of a sudden, go back into it. Romans 10 and in verse 9 says, "If you confess Jesus I'm as Lord, Lord. Yeah. you know, Jesus he is, is Lord. Lord. You know, well, that means He's Lord of everything. Uh -huh. He's Lord over everything. Yep. He, he's Lord. He's Lord over uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yes, He is. You know, He's Lord over you know sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. You know, sugar diabetes. He's Lord over." Stress and strains and everything else. He's Lord over all those things. Mm -hmm. He's He's Lord over our finances. Your finances are not yours. Mm -hmm. He's Lord over them. Mm -hmm. But you've got to give them to Him. Mm. And you got to give to Him. So that's a different message. Yeah, that's a different message. That's a different message. But and you got to give your cares about them over on Him. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, another message. You keep talking. And I'm going to get something prepared that I want to share. Uh, those of you out on the internet, you might not see this, you might not be able to see it, but uh, um, that's okay. Just listen to it. It's a it's a word that came up at camp meeting this this week. Oh, it's powerful. Uh, and uh, it's um, very powerful. It, it's a short it's a short message. About two uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, listen to it. And those of you that are in here, you mm -hmm. can you can watch it. Uh, but uh, listen to it and see it. Uh, go on to uh, Rama uh, TV. Rama spelled R H E M A. Yep. Dot okay. TV, and you can go in there and you can see it, and it's um, um, gosh, it's a powerful prophetic minister. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's a great word, and mm -hmm. so um, just listen to this, okay? okay? Listen to this, and then we'll get going on the message afterwards. Go turn that off. Oh, yeah, I was letting you get to see this. For it shall go far and wide. From your place in the spirit, and your place even in prayer, and your place in the body of Christ. For it shall not just affect this nation, it shall affect nation after nation. And you have been positioned for such a time as this, and for this hour. And though the enemy has done all that he can do, yet he will not be able to stop my plan and purpose in this hour. So you'll lift up your voice, and you'll lift it up with authority, and you'll find that the powers of darkness shall go into confusion, and the word of the Lord shall come forward, and there shall be a turnaround, even in this nation, in America, a turnaround around and the breakthrough in this nation shall affect many nations for the voice of the Lord and the voice of the body of Christ shall be lifted up in this hour and a voice of praise and a voice of joy and a voice of thanksgiving and a voice of authority uh, and things are turning even now as you hear this saith the Lord I've got a plan and I'm working my plan and it's working out in the unseen and it'll come out into the scene so go
stop and remind ourselves, oh, wait, 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 God is He's greater. greater. God is greater. Do we believe that? Do we trust in that? Do we know that to be true? Amen? And in the Bible, there's several instances, but I'm just going to touch on two, but there's several instances where uh, this stuff that we're going through right now was spiritually laid out in, the, in this book. And it was told, it was foretold to us in this book. Amen? And, and, and we, we can see it happening. And what's, what's interesting, even if we didn't understand it or, or believe it or trust it before, it's still there. And people, we can go back and look and say, okay, what do I have to do to fix this? What do I have to do? You know, what can I learn from this? in order to operate and, and to move on into what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to do it. Amen? And then over in Nehemiah, turn over to the book of Nehemiah, and uh, we're going to look there, and then we're also going to, in chapter 1, and we're going to look in Isaiah, chapter 58. <clears throat> but before we get too deep into that, while you're writing that, those scriptures down, and while you're looking it up, you know, i got to go to our foundation scripture in 1 John 5 and verse 14. This is the confidence... Amen. This is the confidence that we have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked of him. Why? Because we ask in confidence and we ask according to his will. It's real simple. We ask in confidence and we ask according to his will. And then the other scripture that I want to you know, leave you with is in Colossians 1 and verse 27, the second part of that. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Now over in Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. Now to give you a little, you know, it's going to be a real quick uh, history of what's going on here. Basically, Jerusalem, Jerusalem had fallen. Jerusalem, the, the walls were in ruins. Okay, the 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 walls. Well, let me read here. It says uh, in, in verse two. It says some men from Judah came, and and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and had survived captivity about Jerusalem. So so the city. Well, you know, was in ruin. You know, there's ruins there. The the walls were in ruins. The gates were burned. Okay, but but history tells us that the, there was one gate that remained. But the gates were the other gates were ruined. Okay, so that that means that uh, that anybody could come in and lay siege to the to the city because there was no protection. There's no no outer wall protection around it. Okay, and you think about it. Uh, this happened because it, it didn't happen because one army was greater than the other. It happened because at that time the church, the ecclesia, the, the you know remember I gave you the definition of what ecclesia was. We are the ecclesia, right? We are the called out ones, the ones that are called into. Well, those who were in Jerusalem, those that, you know those who were there, and the leaders that were there did not did not stand up and did not do the proper things that it took in order for, for the city to, to, to stand up. That's why it fell under siege. Okay? And it goes, it goes in here, it says in verse 3, it says, And they said to me, you know, and now there's men that are, there, there's those men that are out and out floating around, and they came to Nehemiah. Nehemiah, at a young age, became a cupbearer for, for, uh, for, for the uh, king. And when, when he, you know, in a cupbearer, you guys know what a cupbearer is, right? A cupbearer is a person that will drink the substance that is about to be given to a king. So anything that the king was to drink, the cupbearer would drink it first. 
He was in charge of all liquids. Okay? He would take it first. If he died, trust me, the king didn't take it. Okay? So he was very important to the king. And the king took very good care of him because the king did not want, you know, any lies or falsehood. The king didn't want, a, you know, didn't, didn't want uh, wrong things to happen to him. Why? Because he could, you know, false take something and say, okay, king, it's for you. And the king died. You see? So they, the king took care of him. He clothed him. He gave him a nice place to stay. He had a leadership role within, within, uh, within the uh, throne room and in and around the king. He was constantly there. Okay? And so it says here, it says, uh, it says, those who had survived captivity at Jerusalem had came to Nehemiah. Came to him. And it says, and they said to me, the remnant there, the remnant there, the remnant there, circle that. The remnant there. Circle that in your Bible. Why do not circle? Well, I'll get back to it. That's why I want you to circle it. It says the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress and approach and the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. So they're in great distress. You know, this is a perfect picture of the church today. I'm not talking about the rivers living, uh, the work, the the rivers living, uh, the the livers family church. I rivers. keep wanting rivers. Yeah, you livers. Livers. I, I kept trying to say something, my tongue kept going. The rivers family church. It's not talking about. It's talking about the church as a whole. Now I know people get off on that. Oh wait, I am the church. No, you're the ecclesia. You're the called out one for the church. The church is the ecclesia that comes together. That is the church. That is, you know, we are part of the body, but we're not the whole body. When the body comes together, that's the body. You see, when the church comes together, that's the church. And Jerusalem represented the church or the temples. Are you following this? The church represent, you know, the, the it, it, Jerusalem represented the temples uh, and the church itself. The structure of uh, of those who gathered. Okay, that's what it represents here. And it says that the, it was it was under siege. It was it, it was uh, uh, the gates were burned and the walls were down. Okay, they were in rubble. And in verse four it says, "Now it came about that when I heard these words, this is Nehemiah. When I heard these words, I sat down, wept, and mourned for days, and I was fasting." And praying before the God of heaven. Well, what did he pray? What did he seek God after? And this is a thing that the church needs to do. The body of Christ needs to do. He said, and, uh, and I said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, verse 5, the great and awesome God, who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. Let thine ear now... Be attentive, and thy eyes open to hear the prayer of thy servant, which I am praying before, before you now, day and night, on behalf of the sons of Israel, thy servants, confessing the sins and the, uh, of the sons of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, I and my father's house have sinned. You know, think about that. Right now in our country, right now in our area here, I'm just going to speak about the valley, Wenatchee Valley. Right now in this region, the church is in, in its place. Everything that's happening in the state is in its place because the church allowed those walls to come down. The church has allowed siege to take place. Amen. You understand? It, it's right there. It's right there. Let me go. Let me go to another, and we'll come back to this. But let's go to another place. Isaiah fifty-eight. Isaiah fifty-eight. In verse eleven and twelve. Isaiah fifty-eight, in verse eleven and twelve. Lord, help me. Help me get this message out. Isaiah 
Verse 11, it says, And the Lord will continually guide you. Say, He's guiding me. He's guiding me. I'm being led by His Spirit. I'm being led by His Spirit. And satisfy your desire in scorched places. I'm satisfied in this dry place. I'm satisfied in this dry place. Amen. He goes on and he says, And give strength to your bones. Amen. Strength to your bones. And he goes on, he says, And you will be like a, like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Verse 12, And those, who among, those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. That's, called, that's talking about the remnant. They're going to rebuild those ancient ruins. What are those ancient ruins? What are, you won't keep that thought. It says, And will raise up the age-old foundations. What are those age-old foundations? Keep that thought. And you will be called the repairer of the breach mm -hmm. and the restorer of streets in which to dwell. When we first got started in ministry together, one of the, this was one of the scriptures that was dear to our hearts, strong to our hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay, One of the first churches that we had, and, you know, that this is real strong in our hearts. And, and it was about, you know, in, in fact, it was the, the mission statement that we had. To rebuild, raise up, repair, and restore people. Mm -hmm. That's what these were, that's what this this is all talking about. It's talking about his church, his people. Mm -hmm. It's talking about his church and his people. And you look here, it says, you know, those scorch places. We're in a scorched place, but but it says it says satisfy your desire mm -hmm. in those scorched places. And we're in a scorched place, but we're satisfied. Say, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Well, Ray, are you sure? I don't feel satisfied. No, you need to speak it first because you spoke the other so long that you now believe the lie and not the truth. Okay? And it goes on and he says, and, and uh, 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 we'll give strength to your bones. Uh -huh. So there'll be strength there. Amen? There will be no sickness and disease. There will be strength there. And you'll be like a watered garden. What's water represent? The Word. The Word. Yeah, the Word. The Word. You're going to be that sponge, that watered garden, that sponge, that's going to flourish and have all sorts of fruit. Hello? Yeah. Have all sorts of fruit that's going to rise up. And it, and it goes on, and, and it, uh, he says, uh, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. In other words, that Word is going to continually, continually, continually come out of you. Like a sponge that to, to, you know keeps soaking in, keeps soaking in, so, and it'll soak in so much until it creates its own puddle. But then when you touch it, that puddle gets huge. It just spills out. That's the way we should be. And it's water and seeds. It, you know, that, that water goes forth and does those seeds. So all the, the word is that seed. Amen? And back here in Nehemiah, it talks about the remnant there. The remnant, the remnant is us. Those whose hearts are broken, those who 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 who, who have heavy hearts, those of us that are that are uh, uh, that are weeping and mourning and are spending time in fasting and in prayer, those of us that are just seeking after God, 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 seeking after God we're wanting that change. It becomes heaviness and heaviness and heaviness to us. And now all of a sudden we see the destruction that's happening to the church. You know, where in, in, in one state now, they can't even sing songs. They can't chant. In another state, you can only get together with 50 people. That's the most you can get together with is 50. In our state, he just declared, you know, five. Think of that. Five. You know, these are all rights that we have. However, the casinos are open. The bars are open. The gas stations are open. Lowe's is open. Office Depot is open. You know, Walmart is Well, Walmart closed down because they had too many people that tested positive. But they're open today. People can go into those places. People can riot or protest peacefully, as some of the liberals are saying. Yeah, I'm getting there. Go for it. You understand? We can, you know, they can go out and peacefully protest, but you can't get together under the name of God. 
And we've allowed that to happen. How do we allow that to happen? <laughs> lack of prayer. Lack of prayer. Lack of true word. Mm -hmm. True word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Religion. Tradition of men. Mm -hmm. And I haven't even got to the sin part yet. Allowing all kinds of sex to enter into the church. Allowing drinking to enter into the church. There, there is no, there is no uh, conviction of sin that's happening to people that are part of the ecclesia. And so that ecclesia keeps getting small. In fact, it, the, the ecclesia gets filtrated, and, and now all of a sudden the squeaky wheel becomes those who are in sin. And their hearts are so confused, their minds are so confused, there's so much tension around them and confusion and, 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 and lack of structure and lack of a, that there's no foundation now. And now there's no foundation within the church. The walls have come down. And now anybody can go in and siege, lay siege of the church. Anybody can go in and claim what they want to claim in the church. And now we have churches accepting, uh, accepting same, same marriages, uh, you know, the leadership in the pulpit. We have those who are in the pulpit that are having an affairs with, with their secretaries or their worship leaders. Now, don't get me wrong, sin is, you know, sin happens. But let's fix it and correct it mm -hmm. instead of allowing it to continue on. And now we have this issue that, that there's a different, you know, there's race differentials. And we have a, 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 a black pastor in, in, in a city, I'll just, I'll just say in Georgia, that is declaring to all people, that if you're black and you belong to a white church, you need to get out of there now. So now all of a sudden we have division happening within the body. Why? Because those walls are down. There's no foundation. And the, and the place is in siege. Another siege. Amazing. And we've allowed it to happen. Why? Because we... Our lack of prayer. Our, our, our prayers are us four no more. I'm going to believe in my household and that's it. Or we believed a lie and said, no, I don't need to get together with that group. When the Bible says iron sharpens iron, no, I don't need to get together with that, with, with that group of people. I, we can just do our own thing. Oh, wait a minute. The music's not what I want. So I'm going to go worship somewhere else where the music's right. Or the, the message isn't right. It, 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 it convicts me. Give me strength, Lord. Please give me strength. We've been so accustomed to listening to things that bring, that somebody's blowing in our ear and giving us that excitement. We have that cotton candy type faith. I heard her say that this morning. I wanted to steal oh. that. <laughs> that cotton candy type faith. Except for the firm foundation of the word. Except for the firm foundation of the word. What am I talking about? Step number six in, in victory. In having those steps of victory. Step number six is travailing until birth. We have trouble travailing. You know, we have trouble praying for five seconds. We have trouble praying for five, you know, just, just, just lifting up something. We have trouble doing any of this. Why? We're too busy. How do we endure for others? How does the church endure for others? The church needs to start building up those walls. The church, the church, you know, the, the, the when I say the churches, I'm talking about the temples themselves. Those people who gather in those places, those organizations, it's not the four walls, it's a spiritual thing. If you feel called to, to a different group, that's fine. That's a spiritual calling into that group. God places you into those places. He doesn't place you to be by yourself. This is the enemy's lie and the enemy's deception that we've now accepted as being normal. But the remnant, the remnant, the remnant wants the rebuild. 
See, there had to have been something built in order for there to be a rebuild. And it starts by stone next to stone. Stone next to stone. In order to rebuild those walls, they had to take stone next to stone next to stone and start building it back up to where it was. In, 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 in over in uh, Isaiah, over there, where, where it talks about that, there, there needed to be a, uh, a uh, rebuilding of the ancient ruins. Those ancient ruins are, are, are the, not the traditions of men, but the God traditions. The God things. Amen? There needs to be a rebuilding back to those things. There had to have been that time, so it needs to be put back in that place. Amen? And it goes, it goes on here, and it says, uh, raise up the age-old foundations. Those foundations are the, uh, you know, the blood of Jesus. The gifts of the Spirit. Amen? That's what it's talking about there. And you go on. The next one, it says, uh, it says you'll be called a repairer of the breach. In other words, you're going you're gonna to have the wisdom, knowledge, and understand the strength of God to be able to stand there wherever there's a breach. Wherever that breach is. And repair it. Nehemiah, when they were when, when he finally got when he got the okay by the king to take men and to go forth. In fact, the king had given, given him letters to go into different regions and, and to show that letter to get the prime wood and prime stone that he needed to, to repair that to repair Jerusalem. When the men went back there and started repairing, they had a sword on one and they were working with one hand with a sword on the you know with their hand on the sword waiting. Why? Anybody who wanted to lay siege to the city and was coming up, they were prepared for them. There's a lot of times that we go in and start repairing things that we don't have our hand on that protection. What is the sword? The Word of God. And now, right now, the Word right now in the church is so, uh, so milk toast. Instead of a good, strong, carbon-tipped sword, it's now brass. And instead of believing and expecting gold, we've accepted brass as our worship. We've accepted brass as the word. We've accepted brass instead of gold as the spiritual things in the church. We need to restore that. We need to restore that. We need to restore that. We need to restore it. Restore those streets. Clean those streets up. Wherever that, you know, you can look at it and see whenever God's people went forth and did what they were supposed to do, the cities are clean. There was one time Seattle was one of the best cities to live in in the world. Yeah, I'll say that. Those of you that are living over there, you voted this into office. You got what the seed that you planted by your vote. Portland, you got what you planted by your vote. Amen. There's so many Christians that they vote their pocketbook, and yet wonder why their taxes are being going up every year, every year, every year. You get what you got because of your vote. We as the Ecclesia, it's up to us to decide and to give the idea of what the region is supposed to do, what the city is supposed to do, what the state is supposed to do, what our nation is supposed to do. We are to make those decisions, not the politicians. And how do we do that? By our vote. Your vote is your word. And if you, don't ver if you don't vote, then you have no word. Then there is no foundation. There is no cornerstone. Who is the cornerstone? Jesus. Jesus. Of that firm foundation. Amen? And so what we've done now is we've now built on sinking sand.
What is our vote? What is our word? What are we speaking forth? Nehemiah, he prayed it. But it says, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. Mourned for days. It just, it just hurts and hurts and hurts. You know, it, it, with me, it's got to the point to where it's almost an angry frustration. What's the word called? There, there, there's a righteous indignation that's supposed to happen. Well, mine's become a righteous anger almost. And that's wrong. I can't preach that way. I can't teach that way. I can't share that way. But the church, the body, oh, I just want to hear the right music. Oh, I want a pastor to preach a message to me that love. Oh, oh, I want a word of prophecy. I just gave you one. And we just heard one. Oh, I, I, I need to be led by prophecies. Wrong. You need to be led by the Spirit of God. It's not prophetic word that leads you. It's the Spirit of God that leads you. And prophetic word needs to line up with what the spoken word is saying. Am I doing okay, people? Everybody shaking their head. No. So how do we endure for others? How do we endure for the church? Well, we need to stand before God for all the people and for the church. That's intercession. We talked about that before we started. That's intercession. We need to teach, number two, we need to teach them the statutes and the laws, which is what? The Word. The Word, amen? Number four, we need to, I'm sorry, number three, we need to show them the way in which they must walk. Well, I don't need it. You know, I don't need a pastor over me. I can do it myself. How's that working for you, Bubba? How's that working for you? You separate. You separate yourselves. From, teach you what the word is saying to help you in your walk, to guide you. What is a shepherd supposed to do? What do you think he has that staff for? To scratch his back? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting crude now. But, you know, that, that staff's there to help you, to correct you, to pull you back so that you don't get out there on your own to where a wolf can get you. That staff is to, to the point on it is to jab your foot. Why? So you can keep moving to where you need to go. There's a lot of times we get to a spot we just want to stay there. And the church has got to that point. You know, well, I'm entering into rest. Well, give me scripture where it says to enter into rest. And just sit there in your lounge chair, eating bonbons, watching soap operas. Where? It doesn't say that. It, does, it says that we are to, those things that we are seeking after God, we are to receive rest. And that receiving and rest is a believing and an understanding that we have received it. It's not to get lazy spiritually. Well, I just didn't agree with that pastor. Well, I don't agree with a lot of pastors either. You know, there's some things that some of those who are over me that, that will say something or do something that I don't agree with. However, that doesn't mean that you separate yourself from the fold. That doesn't mean, you know, that, that means that we get closer in. Okay, what was he talking about there? What was she talking about there? What was being said? What was, Lord, what do you want me to hear? You know, what, how did I miss this? Forgive me, Lord, that my heart was not receptive of what you wanted to say. And I shut myself down from hearing it correctly. See, that's what happens. And we've allowed all this different, how to say it, nuances of what we believe the word should be and how the church should be 
We've allowed all that to come in and literally have busted down the walls. Number four, show them the work that they must do. We need to show them the work they must do. Number five, select from all the people able men. Select from all the people able men, such as fear God. There's a lot of people that are out there that say, I fear God. I fear God. Do you? Do you? Are you willing to move to a state that might be your home state and you're comfortable with being in that state, but all of a sudden he says, no, I need you to come here into this place that you know nobody and start a church. Some of you, God has put it on your heart to join up with us, but you won't because you're waiting for, you know, God is telling you to do this, but you're waiting for circumstances to get to where you believe they need to be in order to do it. Select from you all the people, you know, from all the people, able men, such as fear God. That was one of the things that God told me about. You know, you don't take every, just anybody with you. There's only certain, you know, and I've shared this before, and I've shared it with my wife, and I've shared it with those of you in here. There's only certain ones that I trust to be around and share things with. Why? So they all don't fear God. They fear man. They fear the repercussions of man. But they don't fear God. Well, you don't understand, you know, my family. I said, I understand your family, fine. I, I understand where you come from. I understand that fear. That fear should not be driving us. That fear should not be dictating to us. The love of God is what should, what motivates us. The peace of God is what directs us. Amen? And I've yet, my wife can, you know, there's been some lean times. There's been some lean times in our marriage. But I've yet to see where God did not show up. Well, you don't even have a house. So, you judging me? You understand? You judging me? Well, I'm gonna go out and get a house, and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make a, you know, five thousand dollar payment on the house that I want. Is that what God wants you to do? Ready? You start to judge people? Yeah, I'm gonna stir their fruit a little bit. Is that what God wants you to do? Because He might want that five thousand dollars as seed to, to share for. You know, maybe buying Bibles for Pakistan, or or, or helping fund the the uh, the uh, 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 ministry school, the the Bible college. It's in Jamaica. A, a friend of mine has a ministry school in Jamaica. Guess what we're gonna get now started hooking up with? I'd love to go to anyone want to go to Jamaica with me? Huh? Yeah. You know, there, there's some good food down there too. I, I'd love to go there. You know, and he has a Bible college. But, you know, God's led him that way. But, yeah. He might want you to support. He might want, he, he might want you to help support the church so it, have, so it can go out and do outreach enough to, so that the church can even grow more. You know, now I know I'm preaching this part to the choir. I know that. I'm talking to you out there. What has God called you to do? Amen. And then the last one, number six, it says, they will bear the burden with you. When we've done all these first five, that's six one. Because you've prayed for them. You've had a heart for them. You've had a heaviness. They're going to bear that burden. They're going to be able to help take that message out with you. In this region, they'll be able to go forth and take that message with you. And in taking that message out, lives will be changed. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Healings will take place. Deliverance will take place. 
Why? Because there's unity now that's taking place within the church. There's unity that's happening within the church. Man, people trip out when you just mention the word church. Oh, I don't believe in church. I don't either. The world's church. But I believe in the ecclesia. And I, I, you know, and I never want us to fall back and become like the cookie cutters at the churches that 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 got you know that that not not that God's raising up, but that's raising up right now. We have people that will leave churches to start ministries, you know, maybe just a few miles away, and half the first church that they were at come and follow with them. We're part of a church in Michigan that that happened. There were there there was what four, I think four now churches that have started from that church, in a little town of a population of fifteen hundred people. At one time they had seventeen eighteen hundred people coming to the church. Those are numbers, people. Those are numbers. And now there's you know there, there's you know nine eight nine hundred, but there's been four churches that have started from that one church. I want, to, I want to think part of our foundation that's under us is because of that church. And if you're listening, thank you. Let's go back in here and look at this. It said the remnant there. Who's the remnant? We are. Right, say, I'm the remnant. I'm the remnant. I am the remnant. I am the remnant. Amen? I am the remnant. It says, it, says, it says, now when it came about and he heard these words, he sat down and wept, mourned for days. And he said, I was fasting and praying before God of heaven. Mourned for days. Are you willing to stand up and be that remnant? Or are you part of the church of the world? That's a challenge right there, isn't it? I just slapped some people. Oops. What is it? What are we willing to do? How are we willing to be? How are we willing to act? And it all starts, like with Nehemiah. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive my family. And Lord, forgive my father's household. For we have sinned. And it starts there. By us proclaiming, I have sinned. And then the next step is, Jesus, you are my Lord. And I confess you as Lord. And I believe in my heart that you're raised from the dead. Holy Spirit, come in and fill me now in Jesus' name. Help me, lead me, guide me, comfort me. Show me all things. Show me all things. And I thank you that the evidence of this infilling, I will speak in new tongues. If that's you, all you have to do is pray that and speak that over your life. And lead your family in that prayer also. And speak that in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, we, I just thank you for the ministry gifts that are here. I thank you, Lord, for the ministry gifts that are watching. I thank you, Lord, that, that you are leading them, you are guiding them, you are comforting them. I thank you, Lord, that, that, that as they stand and they help, the, as the remnant, they help rebuild and restore and repair those breaches and those streets and, and clean things up and get it back to where it was, the foundation and the walls. I thank you that your word is there protecting them. Your armor covers them. Your shield of faith is planted before them. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead, guide, and comfort. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord, I thank you. You forgive sins. And you are the restorer. You are the repairer. 
You are the one that brings back. In Jesus' name. Lord, you are the normal. And I thank you that the eyes of our hearts are lame, that we know the hope of your calling, your glory in the inheritance of saints, your great mighty power, your great mighty power to those who believe. And I thank you for your resurrection power. I thank you, Lord, for revelation happening in us. And I thank you, Lord, that as we travail, as we pray, as we feel it, Lord, we are sensing those birth pains, those contractions that are happening in the earth right now. Holy Spirit, show us. Show us where to go and what to do and what to say. Show us. Show us. It won't be any tradition of men. It won't be any, any religious thought that comes out of my mouth. But show us, because all that comes out of my mouth is your word. Show us, Lord. Show us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we want to uh, encourage you to Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Rivers Family Church. Also to like us on theriversfc.org uh, uh, on our Facebook site and also, uh, also at our uh, website, uh, theriversfc.org. Uh, if, if God's leading you to give to this ministry, that's great. Uh, you can go on our website and you'll see up in the top right hand, You'll see a donation or giving button. Mm -hmm. Follow, you know, hit that, and then follow the prompts, and it'll show you how to give. And uh, we we thank you for that, and we speak blessings over you. And uh, the one thing we want you to remember is that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Be blessed.